Welcome to my video on the unit circle. The unit circle is used so much throughout trigonometry that many teachers expect their students to have it memorized. And many students get frustrated because there's so much stuff on the unit circle and how do you memorize all this stuff and what does it mean? So hopefully in this video I'm going to help you recognize the patterns uh, that occur throughout the circle that will help you memorize it and hopefully make it much easier. So first let's talk about all of the important angles in the unit circle. So first let's talk about 30 degree angles. All angles that are multiples of 30 are important angles on the circle. So that's why we have 30, that's why we have 60, that's why we have 90, 120, 150, and we go all the way up until 360 degrees. Also, all multiples of 45 are important angles on the circle. So that's why we have 45, that's why we have 90, 135, 180, once again, all the way to 360. And at this point, most of you are probably familiar with the units of degrees. But unfortunately, in trigonometry, many times the angles are expressed in units of radians. So how do we convert all of these angles into radians? So first, let's talk about the 30 degree angles. Every 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. Let me repeat that. Every 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. And we can use this information to convert every 30 degree angle into radians. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to convert every 30 degree angle into radians. And please forgive me for my horrible artwork. But we know if 30 degrees is pi over 6, then 60 degrees must be 2 pi over 6, which can reduce to pi over 3. If 60 degrees is 2 pi over 6, then we know that 90 degrees must be 3 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 2. 90 degrees is 3 pi over 6, so we know that 120 is 4 pi over 6, which reduces to 2 pi over 3. Uh, 150 is 5 pi over 6. Uh, 180 is 6 pi over 6, which reduces to pi. So I'm hoping that most of you see the pattern that every 30 degrees you increase by pi over 6 radians. Now let's talk about all of the 45 degree angles. Every 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. So we know that 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. So if 45 is pi over 4, then we know that 90 is 2 pi over 4, which reduces to pi over 2. We knew that already. If 90 is 2 pi over 4, then we know that 135 must be 3 pi over 4. If 135 is 3 pi over 4, then 180 must be 4 pi over 4, which reduces to just pi. And let's do this for the entire circle. We know that 225 is going to be 5 pi over 4. We know that 270 is 6 pi over 4, which reduces to 3 pi over 2. 315 is going to be 7 pi over 4. And 360 is equal to 8 pi over 4, or 2 pi after you reduce it. And notice, after you've rotated 360 degrees around the circle, that you're back at 0 degrees. So 0 degrees and 360 degrees are exactly uh, the same, and which are both equal to 2 pi. So hopefully this gave you a better idea on the different angles in the circle. So now let's talk about the different points on the circle. So because this is a unit circle, we know that the radius is equal to 1 with the center at the origin. So if we go to the right of the origin 1 unit, then we're at the point 1, 0. If we go above the origin 1 unit, then we're at the point 0, 1. And if we go to the left of the origin 1 unit, then we're at negative 1, 0. And if we go below the origin 1 unit, we're at the point 0, negative 1. And that was pretty common sense, but how do we plot all the other points on the circle? So I'm going to label all these points and leave them blank for the moment. So the first thing I like to do is to divide every coordinate by 2. There's going to be a 2 in every denominator. So now notice how every coordinate has a 2 in the denominator. And at this point, I like to start in the top right corner with the x coordinates. And we start with the number 3, and you count down. You go 3, 
two, one. And then once you get to one, you go back up. So you go one, two, three. And with the y coordinates, you do exactly the opposite. Instead of starting with three, you start with one, then you go up, two, three, and then you go back down. Three, two, one. Now let's do the same thing for the bottom half of the circle. We start with the x coordinate with the number three, and you count down three, two, one, and then you go back up. One, two, three. Same thing for the y coordinates, except you start with one, and you go up. One, two, three. And then once you get to three, we go back down. Three, two, one. So now we can move on to our next step. Now we need to put a square root on the numerator of every single coordinate. So we'll start in the top right. We need to put the square root on top of the three, uh, the square root on top of the one, which is just which is just one. So you don't need to put it over the one. Uh, we have the square root of two, square root of two, uh, the square root of one, which is just one. So you don't need to put it. And we have the square root of three. And we need to do this for every single coordinate. So at this point we're almost finished. We just need to make sure if the coordinates are positive or negative. Um, all of the coordinates in the top right corner are always going to be positive because they're in quadrant one. Um, all of the, the coordinates in the top left corner um, are to the left of the origin. Um, so we know that the x values are going to be negative. So I'll put a negative value in front of all of the X coordinates. Um, all of the coordinates in the bottom left hand corner um, are to the left of the origin and below the origin, so the X and the Y are negative. So we have negative in front of the X, and negative in front of the Y. And we'll do this for all the coordinates in the bottom left hand corner. And all of the coordinates in the bottom right hand corner are below the origin, so we know that the Y coordinates are negative. And all of the x coordinates are to the right of the origin, so they stay positive. So now we have completely finished labeling all of the points on our unit circle. So why did we just label all of these coordinates? Now I'm going to explain how we can use these coordinates to find the sine or cosine of any angle. The x coordinate is always equal to the cosine of the angle theta, and the y coordinate is equal to the sine of the angle theta. So let's try and find the sine of 30 degrees. Well we know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the y coordinate of 30 degrees, which is 1 half. So we know that the sine of 30 is equal to 1 half. Okay, and we know that 30 is also equal to pi over 6 radians, so you could say the sine of pi over 6 radians is equal to one half. All right, let's do another angle. Let's say, let's try and find the cosine of 225 degrees. Okay, the cosine of 225 degrees is equal to the x value of 225. So we know that the x value of 225 is negative square root of 2 over 2. So we know that the cosine of 225 is equal to the negative square root of 2 over 2. And we also know that 225 degrees is equal to 5 pi over 4 radians. So the cosine of 5 pi over 4 is also equal to the negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so I hope this gave you a better idea about the unit circle and how you can use it throughout trigonometry. Um, I will be making many more videos in the future, so stay tuned. I um, hope you're enjoying these, and I will see you in my next one.